The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he, and he healed those who were in need who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, He said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praised be Jesus Christ. The miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 men recounted in today's gospel foreshadowed the even greater miracle of the Holy Eucharist by which our Lord feeds us and the many with the heavenly bread of his true body, blood, soul, and divinity until the day of his final coming. Reflecting upon the miracle in fact, helps us to contemplate the most blessed sacrament, which is, in the solemn teaching of the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council, the source and summit of the Christian life. In the decree on the ministry and life of priests, the Council Fathers, drawing upon the teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas, gave fuller expression to the truth that the Holy Eucharist is the fullest and most perfect expression of our life in Christ. They declared, the other sacraments, indeed all ecclesiastical ministries and works of the apostolate are bound up with the Eucharist and are oriented toward it. For in the blessed Eucharist is contained the whole spiritual good of the church, namely Christ himself, our Pasch. For us who are priests, the Holy Eucharist is the reason for our existence. Offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the principal work of our priestly mission. From the Eucharistic sacrifice flows every, our every other priestly ministration. The Holy Eucharist is the mystery of faith. We ponder the Blessed Sacrament ever anew in order to grow in our understanding of the immeasurable and unceasing love of God for all men, for whom he has called us, consecrated us, and sent us to be their priests. At the same time, the Holy Eucharist is the ultimate goal of our priestly work, which finds its fulfillment in the worthy reception of Holy Communion by the souls in our priestly care and in their daily Eucharistic adoration. The miracle itself underlines the essential relationship between the teaching of the faith and the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice. The miracle comes at the close of a day of teaching about the kingdom of God and of healing those who needed to be cured. After the apostles had returned from their first mission, our Lord took them apart to pray. But a large crowd followed him, hungry for both his word and for his works of mercy. 
In fact, when our Lord saw the vast crowd, the gospel tells us that he received them. One imagines how throughout the day until evening, he instructed the crowd regarding the source of healing, both physical and spiritual, in the all-merciful love of God the Father who had sent him, God the Son, into the world. At the conclusion of the day, our Lord does not send the people away, but he performs a miracle in order to sustain them on their journey. In the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 men, our Lord manifested himself as the fulfillment of God's deliverance of his children from slavery in Egypt and is leading them through the desert to the promised land. To sustain the people, God provided them with a mysterious food called manna. Regarding the exodus and the sign of the manna, Moses declared, the Lord your God therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The manna was a sign to the people that the word of God alone could satisfy their deepest hunger and thirst. The manna was a sign of the coming of God in our human flesh, the redemptive incarnation to provide for us the heavenly bread, the body and blood of God the Son incarnate offered up for our eternal salvation. Christ alone satisfies our deepest hunger and thirst, the hunger and thirst for truth and love. Christ alone feeds us with the heavenly bread of his very body, blood, soul, and divinity, which heals our hearts wounded by sin and inflames them with divine love. Of the household of David, he is the long-awaited Messiah, the savior of the world. We see this truth reflected in the crowds who flock to Jesus to hear his teaching and to receive his ministrations of divine pastoral charity. St. Paul makes clear the fidelity and endurance of the love of God for us. Receiving the heavenly bread of the Holy Eucharist, we understand the meaning of St. Paul's declaration. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> the Holy Eucharist is the true body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, first poured out for us in a bloody manner on Calvary and made always present for us anew in an unbloody manner in the Eucharistic sacrifice. Christ, seated in glory at the right hand of the Father, never ceases to pour out from his open heart the gift of his very life to be the heavenly food of our earthly pilgrimage. Through the Holy Eucharist, Christ nourishes the life of the Holy Spirit within us so that we do not grow faint along the way to eternal life, but rather remain strongly united to him as he accompanies us on the pilgrimage, which brings us finally to heaven. And so, too, we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> My brothers, let us pray that we may always draw the exercise of our priestly mission from the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, that we may be inspired and strengthened for our care of souls through the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice. Through our communion with the Lord in the Eucharistic sacrifice we now offer, 
May we always center our exercise of the high priestly office of Christ in the mystery of faith. The mystery of God the Father's immeasurable and unceasing love for us in his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In all that we think and say and do, whether ministering the sacraments, teaching the faith, or governing the flock in our care, may we begin always in the company of our Eucharistic Lord and remain always in his company. May we teach unceasingly the mystery of faith in which we participate now and in every offering of the Holy Mass. May we never fail to recognize and to teach the mystery of the redemptive incarnation by which our Lord remains ever alive for us in his holy church. Dear brothers, let us meditate daily upon the mystery of faith the heavenly reality of the Holy Eucharist in the life of the Church in our personal lives, if possible, through the faithful practice of the Holy Hour. Let us ponder the words of our Lord at the consecration of the Mass, the words by which he transforms the offerings which we lift up, the offerings of bread and wine, the offerings of his holy people, into his true body, blood, soul, and divinity. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. In the Holy Eucharist, Christ, through our priestly consecration, makes present his sacrifice on Calvary. He offers up his body for our eternal salvation, and from his glorious pierced heart, he pours out his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. God our Father has given us no greater sign of his love. God has given us no greater sign of our high calling as ordained priests. Through our devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, may we live always in the company of our Eucharistic Lord. Let us entrust into his glorious pierced heart ever open to receive our hearts, all that we are and all that we have. Let us place our hearts daily anew into the glorious pierced heart of Jesus living the priestly consecration with which he has anointed us. Let us live ever more fully in Christ so that we can bring Christ ever more effectively to those for whom he has consecrated us as his brothers in the priesthood. Let us now lift up our hearts together with the Immaculate Heart of Mary to the glorious pierced heart of Jesus. Let us seek the joy and peace of our hearts in the pure and selfless love of his divine heart. May our Eucharistic Lord receive us into his heart, purifying us of all sin and filling us with the divine love which disposes us to be faithful, generous, and pure shepherds of souls after the heart of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Heart of Jesus, our life and resurrection, have mercy on us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother of America, and Star of the New Evangelization, St. John Mary Vianney. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.